like to first of all thank Rajan and Google team to partner with Hindustan Times and 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 uh, arrange this evening. I think this was a very lively session. Uh, I saw a huge amount of participation, and I apologize on behalf of uh, us and our partners that uh, we are not able to take all the questions. But certainly offline, we'll be able to answer any question that you might have missed asking. Uh, one of my most somber moments has been when my uh, two boys, actually we are making a huge amount of investments in, in, uh, in, in digital business, knowing that uh, newspapers have got some questions about their longevity, although I believe they'll be still around five decades from now. But my two boys uh, told me that I'm getting it completely wrong because I happen to be uh, BG, which is apparently a term for before Google, and they happen to be AG. So this is a joke that's been done to death, but it was real when I was told that I don't stand a chance because I happen to a wrong generation. Uh, therefore, uh, I did a little more research and I looked at uh, how education was in, in imparted uh, in, 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 in eras which were mythological eras. And the story I came across was the story of Eklavia. I'm sure all of you have heard that. Now, Eklavia was this bright student who wanted to learn archery. Unfortunately, his teacher was not, was not willing to accept him because teacher had made a commitment to Arjun that he's going to make him the best archer on earth. And he didn't want to compromise on that promise. Therefore, he told uh, Eklavia that uh, he's not going to take him into his school. Now, Eklavia was a very determined, very motivated, very hardworking student who then went and made a statue of this teacher, Doronacharya, and started to practice in front of his statue. And as story goes, he actually became a damn good student. Now, this is all pre-Google era, otherwise he would have opened Google, seen there how exactly to do archery, and he would have been even brighter than what he was. But uh, since Google had not arrived at that time, he had to do it in front of this statue. Apparently, this worked. And uh, one day uh, he was resting in his small little hut and the dogs were barking and he got very irritated with the dogs. He, uh, he, he used the archery and uh, used a bow to silence this dog and uh, uh, the story goes that the arrow went so, 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 so precisely that it didn't kill the dog but got him completely silenced. Now, when Arjun and Drona were walking there, they saw this dog and they were completely zapped by seeing who exactly could have done that. Uh, they started to look for the person who did it and they ran into, uh, into, into Eklavia. And uh, they asked Eklavia how exactly he learned it. And he saw his teacher and fell on his feet and said that I learned it from you. Now, teacher obviously saw that this was a student with huge potential who has learned it better than his own uh, very, very dear student. Uh, whom he thought had immense potential and his promise is going to fall, fall apart. So he told uh, the student that your, your degree is going to be not accredited and therefore uh, in order to get accreditation he will have to, uh, he'll have to enroll and he's willing to take him as a student and the Guru Dakshina as we all know was the right thumb. The moral of the story is that teaching used to belong to uh, only the elites. That world was the world in which elite would go to the best schools, would get accepted by the best teachers, and would, would eventually come out as winners. The question, however, remains what happens to the Eklavias and what happens to the, uh, to the underprivileged who were possibly not belonging to the right caste, were not born right, and did not have the opportunity. I'd say Google has changed that world, and it has made the opportunity, and along with technology and internet, the world that we live in today is a very, very different world. Uh, I met Gary Hamill in 1998 when Gary told me that, you know, the walls of, of Boston colleges are going to come down. At that time, it sounded pretty bizarre. How is it that the walls of Harvard and, and, and all the colleges in Boston and, you know, the Ivies are going to come down? Uh, but obviously, he was a man ahead of his time when he was running this firm called Strategos, which was looking into all innovations which are going to uh, hit the world in times to come. Six months ago, uh, Harvard Business School started an initiative called HBX. Uh, HBX is Harvard's first initiative uh, in imparting education online. When Nitin Aurya stood up and said, five years ago I said we are never going to give education online because we have this beautiful case-based case method. This has stood us for more than 100 years and we are never going to compromise on that. And he said, I was completely wrong. 
HBX has stunned the world. It has put fear in the minds of all the colleges in US and all the brands where now Harvard will have a reach that they are possibly going to be out of business. By 2020, it is forecasted that 50% of B schools in US will be out of business because this initiative is going to really make reach available for best schools to be reaching out to students wherever they are. As Swami Vivekananda had said, if students cannot go to the school, school will have to go to students. And that is a reality in today's time. Now, if we are looking at 300 million students to be educated in India, 300 million students who potentially have to reach the, the, the college going uh, age and who have to reach the colleges, there simply is not enough land in this country to be able to build university. I don't believe there are enough resources to build colleges and universities which are going to be able to, to, to reach out to these students. Therefore, our destiny is going to be innovating and the innovation is going to come through access on online. Uh, I do believe that uh, it is not just India, but it is the other three billion people in the world who do not have access to internet right now. The other three billion, O3B, is an initiative that is going on in Africa and a few other countries once this access becomes a reality, I think the, the, the topic of today will become even more relevant. How exactly are you going to be able to reach out to those students who are looking for education using digital marketing? So I think the, the debate of today was very apt. The time for this is about to come. This is an idea which I think in the next decade is going to be the most profound idea that internet has seen because I do believe the world is going to be a better world once education reaches all. Thank you very much for this evening. Thanks once again to all the partners. Thanks to Rajan, Sapna, Samir, Lee, and Nitin for being here. It was a very lively discussion, and I look forward to seeing you again here sometime. Thank you.